Today I want to talk about tail climbers. I know some of you love this which comes on the back of your bike. There are places in the world where this is a really, really good idea because it does keep the water and the mud off your back. But for some of us, looks are more important than protection. For those of you who want to get rid of this and replace it with something shorter, let's see what we can do with this. Before I talk about uh, doing anything with the stock one, just a quick word. I've seen a lot of guys go on about buying cheap stuff off of places like AliExpress. The thing is, you get what you pay for. Some people think it's not worth the money to go out and buy an expensive tail tidy. And they do cost, the good ones do cost a lot of money. People think they can buy the same thing cheaply on somewhere like AliExpress. And the truth is, you can't. You really do get what you pay for. If you pay only a small amount of money, you're going to get something that's very cheaply made and made out of inferior uh, quality materials. And this is a classic example. Now, I didn't fit this. The previous owner fitted this. And at first sight, it looks, it looks okay. It's a nice thick piece of steel and it's been powder coated. But what always happens with this, it's a really low grade piece of steel that they've used. It's not been finished at all. It's got razor sharp edges around here. And what happens with that is that the powder coating doesn't stick very well on the corners. And it doesn't take very long at all. And don't forget, this is quite protected. This is underneath the number plate. So this is not getting hit by anything. And here you can see all around the edges here, all around every single sharp edge there is, the powder coat has come away and it's going rusty underneath and the rust then just peels the powder coating off. When you're buying a decent quality product, they do cost a lot of money to make. So uh, think twice before you buy something cheap. Personally, I wouldn't buy this. This is going to get replaced. I might actually rework it because the thing is, a bit of time put into this could actually turn this into something decent. But it was made cheaply, so there isn't. And it's made out of really low quality steel, so it rusts really badly. Anyway, enough of this. The first thing you want to do when you're doing anything like this is to get some, whatever your favorite brand of, uh, uh, I'm using ferrosol here, your favorite brand of penetrant in, is to get it up inside here, up behind here where all the bolts are, and try and soak them before you try and take them off because they will be rusty because they're constantly even under the stock one getting hit by a spray of water and if you're somewhere like the uk where it's we use salt in the winter it gets up in there and it will rust and corrode all the fastenings so try and get that soaked before you need to do it the next thing you want to do in order to get the towel toady off and this comes off the same way as the stock one does is to disconnect the wires now there are three wires left right indicator a number plate lamp and they all connect up inside the tail unit so the wires from that unit come out inside here now I've got more stuff in here than you probably do where the wires come out all together so what we've got is we've got a red a green and a grey those are the three wires that come out so we can disconnect them. What we do is we, if you look here, there's a little raised part. So you press on that. And uh, they will come apart. Just wiggle them apart gently. And because they're all colour coded, uh, corrosion, look at that. So that'll get a spray. Because they're colour coded, you won't have any issue with putting them back together afterwards. Right, there we go. So with the wires, three wires disconnected, that is now ready to be taken off. 
and there are four bolts. You need to just remove those bolts and this unit will drop away complete with the wires coming out the top. Two hours, if not three hours later, I'm still trying to remove the remains of one screw that wouldn't come undone. Because what happened is the cheap fastenings, the cheap bolts that came with this tail tidy kit were made of a really soft, inferior stainless steel. But the problem you have is that these Allen bolts have just rounded out and this one has just sheared because it has no strength because it's made of cheap steel which meant I've had to take the entire tail apart. I've had to remove bolts to, to give me access to the uh, under tray. I've had to take the seat catch off just so I can get enough room to get in there and get that bolt out. Once you've got the unit off the bike, like this, we can take it apart. Now you've taken the bolts out of this end, so at this end you've got two screws here. cables through it will release this from here there we go so this part is removed and this is the key part we actually need to to change this I found out cuts out quite easily uh, if you've got a grinder it's just a straight cut down either side and one across and then you can uh, clean it up with the grinder afterwards. This is going to have to slide up until it meets the bike. That's what I'm going to experiment with now and seeing just how tight up we can get it. Now I think I'm going to have to do some more cutting and grinding on the front. So let me show you what I'm thinking.
Right, so here's the tail tidy part and the important part is that this needs to bolt on to this mounting here now just holding up against the bike i reckon i'm going to need to cut it off somewhere in this region so i'm going to cut long to start with and then we'll see where we go and what we want to make sure is we don't cut any of the cables while we're doing it Right, I'm just going to hold that up against the bike um, and see what that looks like. Right, a little bit of playing around with the bike, so I wasn't showing you there. quickly welded up. I've run out of gas so I'm a bit stuck on the welding but it's all done. Could do with a bit of cleaning up. We've drilled a hole for the rubber end plug. So let's do a test fit. See there has a plug on that. Holds the end cap in place. That's that mocked up. Now I just want to cut this off and uh, we'll test fit to the bike. I've mocked this up on the bike so you can see how it fits and also to just show a particular design issue that you need to take account of when you're making this. What it's currently doing is pointing directly at the tyre. Now bear in mind the tyre doesn't come straight up and down, it actually comes up at an angle because you've got a swinging arm. The actual amount it comes up is restricted by the rear shock. However, as it stands, these will hit the tyre. So, if you want to keep this angle on the back, what you need to do is to not cut it as short as I have here. You want to bring it out to about here and then it'll clear the tire nicely if you've got a hugger down here like I know some for example the Indian market bikes have 
you'll need to allow a bit more room. What I'm going to do is I am going to bend this up. You could eliminate this problem by choosing how you weld this bit on. Because don't forget, I welded this bit back onto the support bar in here. If I'd have welded it at a flatter angle, I wouldn't have this problem. But what I would have is a different problem because this plastic part bolts to the top of that. So you would need to bend the tabs up. And I decided it was easier to get this flat so the indicators are pointing straight back and they're not angled up or down doing this and then bending this. But it is a choice you need to make. You need to decide how short to have this. And it will look still perfectly good if it sits out here rather than sitting back up in here. But I like this, so this is what I've gone with. What I'm simply going to do is I'm going to cut the support here on both sides and bend it up. But to do this, I need to take this plastic cover back off so I can see what I'm doing. I've cut two slots here and one on the other side. It's just above this indentation here. So and I just go for the angle that I want. That's probably about it. I'd say it's well within a fairly normal tolerance. It's not like it's it's up here or anything like that. And there's quite a lot of travel. However, monitor it. If the tyre does hit, I uh, can't really see it happen, but if it ever did, well, we'll simply bend it a little bit more. Now, I'm going to weld up those gaps. Looks like a little more on... Right, weld them up, dress up the welds, and move on. Here is the finished product. It just needs to be painted now, and otherwise it's ready to go back on the bike. This took a very long time to make. Not because it was difficult to make, quite to the contrary. Because all it needed to do was to cut here, the welds off, around here, slide this up this tube. I had to cut the bracket down here, to get it as close as I wanted it but if you have it further back you won't have that problem then uh, you can see here I didn't bother welding in the slight cut mark here this marks where this bracket used to come up to bear in mind it was it was a much longer bracket it needed to be much sturdier than this is now although this is fully welded in so it's not going to go anywhere I flattened it out as you saw I've welded that up so it now looks OEM and that's the thing I like about this it's not as fancy looking as a lot of the aftermarket ones out there but it does look stock there's nothing here that would tell someone looking at it unless they compared it to another one that this was not how it came from the factory now with the plastic you can probably tell because you've got to cut the plastic and there's no real way around that so this i just need to put some primer on put the top coat top coat on and get on with it so it's you say i find it it's it's a very strong bracket certainly over engineered for being just holding on a license plate but there we go i've already managed to drop this on the floor and chip the paint which is you know par for the course really so we've got the actual bracket itself that's ready to go and we've got what remains of the plastic cover. So this part goes up underneath the bike and clips in place and helps keep some weather out from the underneath the bike. And then you've got the wiring part here. Now you've got a rubber plug that sits on the wiring harness here and it's got a little rubber part here 
which clips in to the hole in this so you have to remember to drill the hole if you want to use this and this seals uh, the water coming up inside this pipe and getting into the wiring which you don't really want if you can avoid it and I also suggest that the bolts that you use to fit it on you make sure that you lubricate them with some sort of grease because this underneath here where these sit because these will sit in these holes here just gets sandblasted with dirt and water and in this country salt and it's the m most corrosive environment for it which is why I had real difficulty getting the original bolts out now these are actually the stock KTM bolts in my aftermarket tail tidy it had cheap bolts what a surprise now, this is why I do stress it is worth spending a bit of time uh, making stuff to a high standard. If you do buy a cheap tail tie like that, use some decent bolts in it. It's quite easy to get hold of a teal or a four grade stainless steel marine grade bolts that won't rust work very easily um, and not some cheap steel rubbish. So what we need to do is get this all clipped in and onto here so let's get on with that get your wires all neatly in place here you can see there are some little hooks that they go under here so I get them all in there ready to come into uh, this here now these if you look carefully are three different lengths of, of cable and the idea of that is so that you don't try and get all the plugs through the same point at the same time so it is quite easy just to feed them through one at a time. Don't worry about the extra length because you can just tuck that up inside the actual bike it's when it comes to it. So we get the rubber plug cover over the end and that will just clip down nicely inside the hole. Having got that in there, what we now need to do is get this bit over here so that we can bolt it down through the holes here. So let's take a little, a minute to get all those wires nice and neat and tidy in there where they're not going to get pinched. So just double check, make sure there's not any issues. That rubber plug actually sits really tight up in there, so it's a really good idea for waterproofing. So we've got the two fittings here, and again, some grease on these is not a bad idea. Because at some point you may want to take them back out. there we are so now that is the complete unit ready for installation if you've used putting a plastic cover in which I recommend because it gives protection to this part here which is the underneath of the tail unit and if you use it there are little lugs just on the end which clip into the plastic under tray just here but there are little holes just down there for them to clip into so that will stay up there on its own then feed the wires through there's no need to cut these down at all there's plenty of room up underneath the passenger seat for these wires to sit as you can see I've got the passenger seat off up here so as the wires come through you can help pull them through
and then we can bring this up so that the little lugs on the bottom here match through the holes to here and with a little bit of wiggling that will then come up in place and we can start to put the bolts in can take a little bit of fiddling just to get them all lined up but if you've got some grease on them they will go in there nicely and then work your way around the four in a cross pattern and get them tightened up so you've got the three wires that have come through from the tail tidy and you've got the three wires we need to reconnect so it's a very simple job of plugging them back in so you want to tuck these away out the way now I've got this piggyback here which is sort of always takes up a bit of space so I'm going to tuck them all the way down here but first of all I'm going to just plug them in and then I can find a home and tuck them out of the way which obviously you'll be able to do the same so let's just put that back down in there and that's pretty much it that's job done so what I'm going to do now of course is to test that everything works so tow light is on brake light indicators so everything working as it should Stop tail tidy, done. It's a simple job, a little bit of welding. If you can't weld, you either will know someone who can weld, or there'll be someone close to where you live that can weld, and they'll be able to weld it up for you, show them what you want, get them to do the job, and it'll be simple. Even if you pay someone to do that bit of work for you, it still won't cost you more than you would pay for a cheap piece of rubbish tail tidy i like the look because at first glance it looks stock because you've used stock components so it's a bit of a stealth build so thanks for watching and i will see you again soon